the object that they sighted flew in such an unusual way. It flew without sound. It made manoeuvres that were just completely uh, unbelievable in terms of the angles, in terms of the speed. The object didn't look like any sort of aircraft. If I felt that there was only a handful of cases, I just wouldn't be interested and it wouldn't have maintained my interest. But there are literally thousands of those kinds of cases worldwide. UFOs, flying saucers, aliens. We may come across these subjects hardly giving them a second thought. But you have to wonder, with UFOs being one of the most popular search topics on the internet, why so many people are interested. Biochemist and ufologist Bill Chalker has been gathering evidence for years and says there are too many sightings from credible eyewitnesses that can't be ignored. He says one of the most intriguing stories he's come across involved a highly experienced naval pilot. He's doing a routine night cross-country flight near Goulburn in New South Wales. Two objects come up either side of his aircraft and maintain a station at, um, and they seem to close in on the aircraft. And just as he was starting to think that he's going to have a collision, suddenly they stop and they move back out again to a, what he regarded as a safe distance from the aircraft wing. And then he's sitting there thinking the aircraft, thinking, uh, does he report this to Narrow Naval Air Station? You can see his whole flying career going down the, down the drain. And luckily the um, ground control at Nara contacted him first and said, well, um, what, have you, what have you got with you? Bill says sightings occur all over the country and with many there's a natural explanation but they aren't the stories he's interested in. Most people often have a genuine misinterpretation of a light in the sky, that kind of stuff, could be Venus, could be any number of things but what I'm, I'm not talking about that, I'm really talking about those cases that are very difficult to explain or cannot be explained based on our current science. Another such story is the Westall case. For two years, university tutor Shane Ryan has been researching an occurrence in Melbourne in the 1960s where a UFO landed in a schoolyard in front of hundreds of eyewitnesses. The object was described by people who saw it as a classic flying saucer-shaped object, silver, grey, metallic-looking, like a couple of bowls um, joined together and flying through the air, low over the school and coming down and without much sound. The witnesses were mainly students at the high school and the adjacent state school, but also some teachers and people who were living and working in the area at the time. And it's not just UFOs that average Australians claim to have seen. Peter Corey says in 1992 he was visited by two female aliens, one blonde and one Asian looking while he slept. Corey says he later found hairs on his body that he suspected belonged to the aliens he'd seen. He kept the hair for a number of years before giving it to biochemist Bill Chalker to test. When the biochemist came on board and they did the test, um, they were blown away because that's exactly what they came away with. The root of the hair had uh, rare Basque Gaelic DNA, which is tall blonde, and uh, the shaft of the hair, the length of the hair, had uh, rare um, Chinese mitochondrial DNA. So the hair had two strands of DNA, which it just can't happen unless there's cloning involved. Your hair, my hair, should have the same DNA right through it. Despite some compelling evidence and bizarre stories, Bill Chalker says it's still a struggle to give his research the recognition it deserves. Science and UFOs has really had a pretty sorry kind of history, but it's kind of uh, slowly creeping to, uh, I guess, a critical mass where I think eventually it's going to be sort of seriously looked at and scientists in the future will look back at it and say, well, you know, we lost a lot of opportunities of looking at something really interesting and, and perhaps we should have looked at it a little bit more... Uh, in more detail perhaps.